Calgary Police Service continues to seek public assistance in the search for a missing Calgary woman. Sandra McIntuck Evans, 56, was last seen at her family home in the community of Strathcona in southwest Calgary on Saturday, December 29, 2012, around 6 p.m. Because she liked to go for walks in the Unworthy Park area in the past, police and Calgary Search and Rescue volunteers searched that area on Monday, December 31, 2012. That search proved negative. There is currently no information to lead the search to other areas of the city. However, however, officers continue to look for McIntyre Evans while following up on any leads from the public. We are asking that anyone with further information uh, is asked to contact us or Crime Stoppers, and we will follow up. So, uh, I'll just kind of go through what happened. Uh, she was last seen on uh, Saturday, the uh, 29th of December, around 6 p.m. Uh, the following morning, uh, a family member came home, so that's uh, Sunday the 30th, and uh, made inquiries with other family members as to uh, where she was when uh, nobody knew where she was, and, and they realized that she hadn't been seen since 6 p.m. the night before. Uh, police were contacted. Uh, we did what we could that night with the information that we had following up on potential tips and leads from the family. Um, and it was the next morning, Monday the 31st, that we, um, with the assistance of uh, Calgary Search and Rescue, which is about 40, 50 volunteers, and Calgary Police Service members did an extensive search at Edworthy Park. Based on the information that she does go down to Edworthy Park uh, quite frequently for walks, so uh, a pretty comprehensive search from daylight to dark was conducted uh, by that group with uh, no results. Uh, since that time, there has been further um, searches done based on tips, mostly from the public. So in addition to our officers uh, having information on their computers, their broadcast message, um, and, and information that they have through bulletins to keep an eye out for her, and that's been circulated throughout the city. Uh, also with the assistance of Hawks, K-9, the mounted unit, uh, we've now also uh, contacted Alberta uh, Provincial Parks Ranger folks for just outside the Calgary area. So really it's uh, just notifying everybody that we can. Uh, we have had assistance from the fire department to search along the riverbank area. So there's a lot of folks that continue uh, to look for her. But at this point, uh, even though we've had a number of great tips, um, uh, more than a dozen, there's been uh, good information, good tips. We have followed up on every one of those tips move that search component around based on those tips and again nothing has come up so we're grateful for those tips and we hope that more information will come in but at this point we will continue doing what we're doing um, this is totally totally out of character for this lady uh, we're talking uh, a teacher special needs kids very very active in the community just um, there's nothing that would indicate that what has happened here um, is Totally out of character. The family says this is just she's basically disappeared, and uh, no leads, no reason why. And so we're looking to the public to uh, to give us any information that we can in hopes of finding her. Uh, so no formal search at this point. I think is what you said in there. It's at this point, no. If we get information that um, there's another area of the city that, uh, based on a tip or the family saying, you know, there's somewhere else that she used to hang out or like to go for walks, we'd certainly be there now, or we would search there and we would. Uh, employ the resources of Calgary Search and Rescue, wonderful folks, all volunteers, you know, 40, 50 people that will come out on the phone call and they'll help us search as they have in the past and in this case did. And we will search wherever we need to. I mean, this is a huge city uh, and surrounding area, so we're, we continue just with the regular patrols, hawks from the air, the canine unit mountain bike in, in parkways and pathways that may not be accessible by vehicle. That search continues uh, with all of our members, but Hopefully more information will come in and, and we'll get the tip that we need to find her. How difficult was uh, the search given that, you know, it's been a lot of winter where there's snow on the ground, it's, you know, things can easily cover her. It's a lot easier to cover up someone who might be frozen in that country. Yeah, and also the fact that um, it, it makes it easier to see if there's been footprints or activities in areas. So it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's, it's been good to be able to see if somebody has been through the area, but of course, uh, we are concerned about the cold weather, and, and we're not sure what she was wearing at the time when she, when she disappeared. So 
uh, climate weather and the time that has passed now all significant factors into to why we continue searching and we hope that we get more information from the public if anybody has seen anybody that matches their description. None of the vehicles were missing. Uh, from the family, everything was left behind. Again, totally out of character. ID left behind, um, vehicle left behind, credit cards, everything left behind. Just all went, went, went for a walk and disappeared. So again, uh, just not normal behavior for her. Do yeah, I'm sorry, just to clear this up, and sorry if I missed this, but I haven't been following the story long. Uh, how do we know she went for a walk? Like, how do we know when she, we, we just know that she was last seen at home, and yeah. then we know when the daughter came so home the next day. We don't know that she went for a walk. I mean, that's the assumption she left the home, went for a walk. She likes going for walks in the Edward Park area. Um, there's no signs of forced entry, no signs of struggle, no signs of foul playing in and around the house. Uh, there's nothing currently in her life or in her background that would lead us to believe that there's any issues or concerns that would would lead us in the direction. I mean, we're, we're keeping open-minded, as we always do when investigations like this happen, that we don't want to just pigeonhole that this is what happened and we're going to only search here. So we have to keep all those options open. But at this point, there's nothing that would lead us to believe that it's anything out of the ordinary, normal life, normal lifestyle, and family, everything seemed normal. Six o'clock on Saturday night, um, a family member who lives with her left for the evening came home the next morning, she wasn't there, started asking around, realized nobody had seen her. We got called in later that day, and uh, you know, here we are a couple of days later, still still looking. So uh, the assumption is that she left one for a walk, and, and that's what we're, we're basing our searching on right now. Um, at Worthy Park, one area of it uh, was Douglas Fir Trail and almost uh, up on the uh, so the bank or we really all searched? I know that uh, all the information I have is that uh, a really comprehensive search of that whole area where the park area was done by us, Cal Sarah, from the air and also at the fire department along the riverbank. Um, so I don't know how extensive that was, but I did hear that it was a very, very comprehensive search from daylight till, till dark. How many people were involved in that search? Well, we 40 plus just with Call Sarah, and then uh, our service helicopter, the, uh, the folks with uh, Calgary Fire along the riverbank. So there were a number. I mean, it's typical that in a search like that, you would want to have as many resources as possible there for that time period while it's light, um, because it usually is something that you want people in fairly close proximity to each other. So they. Uh, they, they will bring in a lot of resources to do that type of thing. So I don't know exact numbers, but um, in excess of 40, 50 people. Was it information from the family that she wasn't taking her medication? Um, well, that's a concern for us. Um, she was one of these people that religiously was taking medication. Uh, I, I don't know for what. I mean, we would we would call her anyway, but. Uh, that is an additional concern that she didn't take her medication with her. So for somebody who regularly took medication, um, now we factor in the weather, was she properly clothed, uh, doesn't have the medication. All of these are, are of course, concerns for us and we hope we can try to find her as soon as possible. Have you obviously gone to the, the hospitals and like drop the center and that sort of thing? Nothing. Yeah, I mean, those are typically typical investigative follow-up if you're going to check with all the hospitals and Alberta Health and the clinics and drop-in centers. We have checked some hotels. We, we've done a whole lot of follow-up. And the tips uh, from the investigators have been great tips. And we have been hopeful every time a new tip comes in. And, and we've been on them really, really quick and doing whatever follow-up we need. But so far, those have not panned out. So we're, again, we're grateful that the public has been calling in and they have been good tips. And unfortunately, she's still missing. So. Hopefully that phone call still comes. Does she have any um, issues with like maybe being forgetful or like um, early Alzheimer's? No, uh, I don't think there's any anything out of the ordinary that um, uh, that we're aware of concern-wise. Again, like she was a teacher, special needs kids, uh, very active in the community, uh, very busy, reliable type lady, and it's just very out of character for her. 